It's April 1st again, and that means another April Fool's Day video. In the past, we've done topics on movies, hotel carpets, and even trading cards. However, this year, our out there topic is covering that of an actual person. Coming in at six feet, eight inches with a 37 inch vertical leap, we're of course talking about the back-to-back -back 1993-1994 blockbuster video game champion himself, Dr. Disrespect. Now, regardless of whether you like or dislike video games or the people who stream them, or just streamers in general, it should be noted that the time and effort many put into making it a fully-fledged career often involves a lot more work than it seems. The need to self-promote and stay relevant while remaining interesting and enjoyable to the base in the constantly shifting industry can be quite challenging and tiresome. Dr. Disrespect is definitely a streamer who goes the extra mile when it comes to production and overall quality of his content. So much so, he's pretty much at the tippity top of the mountain, but isn't even halfway up. Known for his height, short temper, and competitive demeanor, he has created quite an interesting and involving style around himself and his streams. Building his brand over the past few years, the Doc streams are filled with high-quality CG backgrounds, locations, transitions, new wave-style music, and effects. However, his most famous element is his actual look. His overall style can be described as a blend of OutRun or Synthwave, 1980s action motifs, a bit of futuristic styles with a splash of tactical. That's quite a bit, and because of it, it puts him above many others as far as aesthetic and overall brand recognition. Going a step further, we have his saying. No, no, the other one. Violence, speed, momentum. Yeah, that's the one. This saying has become synonymous with his playstyle, overall theme, and for the sake of this video, his recognizable yet constantly fluctuating outfits. Throw in his sponsorships, book, character skin, plus an entire level dedicated to his arena in the game Rogue Company, fan competitions, and recently created gaming studio, the man stays busy. However, through all of this, the most famous element relating to him remains his actual look. Now, Doc has been around for quite a while, meaning that his garments and looks have slightly evolved over time. With that in mind, we'll be focusing on the one seen within the last few years, as they've become practically rooted into his overall aesthetic. Starting up top, we have his headset. Though they have changed over time, his go-to ones since about 2018 or so have been Turtle Beach brand. Even though his models update from time to time, it appears they are always either black black, black and red, or in the case of older streams, black and blue in color. As of late, the dominant one is his own Stealth 700 from a line of peripherals made by Turtle Beach and Rock Hat. Below those, the two-time almost always wears his Google prototype scopes with built-in LCD LED 1080p 3D Sony technology with new models delivered to his house every morning. Now, it would be quite an endeavor to identify every version seen, however, they can mostly be categorized in either black mirrored, in the case of older style ones, or red and or yellow tinted ones, though on occasion other types have also been seen. Though it's impossible for anyone but the doc to get their hands on this tech, very similar ones come in the form of tinted sports style glasses, specifically from the manufacturer Oakley. Recently seen versions are custom flight jackets and EV Zero paths, of which he appears to have a few different versions that seem to be the most frequently worn. These can be purchased online, however the best route is through Oakley directly as they offer customization options for just about every component of the glasses. Now for Black Steel, aka the bulletproof mullet, there obviously are two ways to go. You can grow one out and dye it black, assuming that's not your natural hair color, and enjoy it in all its glory, or just find a wig. For the latter option, wigs can be found online or usually in a costume or party supply store. His mustache, known as Slick Daddy, is actually a poisonous Ethiopian caterpillar but for those who can't find one of those, a shortened handlebar mustache will do. Once again, you can grow one out or find a fake one through the same outlets as the wig. Regardless of whichever way you go, just be sure to get yourself his now famous switchblade comb he picked up from Sensei Billy in Dimension R. Luckily for us, the same one he uses can be sourced off eBay. This brings us to his phone, which is a red Motorola Razr V3i, as it has black buttons and an interior accent. Moving down, we have the shirt and pants. These are the items that change the most, but will boil down to the following two categories. His primary streaming and his event and out in public apparel. Starting with the streaming, it is usually made up of often matching compression wear consisting of a mock turtleneck or short sleeve shirt and pants that are most often black, red, white, or very rarely gray in color. Now, this is where you can go a few routes, as aside from the primarily seen colors, there are also different colored stitching and paneling as well. 
For example, a black shirt with black stitching, black shirt with red stitching, black shirt with gray stitching, and sometimes black with paneling below the arms and in the torso area. Lastly, every now and again, he'll switch out the pants for a pair of black basketball shorts or black sweatpants. A good place for the compression sets as well as the sweatpants is his website, championsclub.gg, as the red and black versions have been offered there in the past. If you can't find your size or they're sold out there for whatever reason, any sports or fitness store should have them, and if not, then simply check Amazon. Now, for the doc's public appearances, specifically events, meeting with fans, and dealing with Timmy, he usually utilizes a black combat shirt, which is actually the proper tack you model. However, it is also worth noting he will often go out wearing the same style compression shirt seen in many of his streams. Below, he'll often wear either a pair of US Woodland BDUs or a pair of black cargo pants. The BDUs are extremely easy to find. However, the black cargo pants, on the other hand, are a bit odd as they appear a few different ways online in that they often are sold as unbranded and under different names. The most detailed listing we found was on Amazon calling them Kaber Men's Cotton Casual Military Army Cargo Combat Work Pants. Yeah. Wherever they're posted online often shows low quality images with names and descriptions that are just an assortment of keywords and generic terms, but they are pretty distinctive as far as cargo and back pockets go. Finally, to hold up these pants are an assortment of belts. However, there appears to be a few go-to ones which are black or dark green leather style ones in which you can just go with any black or dark green single prong belt. Then there's the all black elastic arcade midnighter belt which is often seen alongside the black cargo pants. These are readily available online through a few different websites. Finally is a sort of suede or possibly canvas olive dominant belt with double prongs. This one is almost always seen around the Woodland BDUs and in some pictures appears to have a form of camouflage pattern about them. On top of all that is perhaps his most recognizable piece, his vest. Based on various streams, public appearances, and promotional content, it appears that he has one primary and two secondary vests. His main one seen being worn almost always while streaming, is the Voodoo Tactical Instructor High Visibility Plate Carrier. These are relatively easy to source through tactical sites, eBay, and Amazon, plus they don't go for too much money. His other two vests are a little different though. Most memorably known for his 2019 E3 stream, though seen occasionally more recently as well, the second vest is a larger black one that has a series of leather or pleather plates making up its front. Funnily enough, this vest seems to be a more basic look-alike version of the one worn by Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, in 2017's movie G.I. Joe Retaliation. It can be purchased through a few different websites, but seems to be referred to as the Roadblock Black Armor Vest after Johnson's character's codename. Just keep two things in mind. First is that there are ones out there with a different quantity of rivets. The correct one can be easily ID'd as it has four along the inside edge of the wearer's right chest plate. The second is that Doc stitched a patch of his logo to cover up the R on the same chest plate. Finally, the last vest is an interesting one as it seems to be a slightly modified plate carrier that's really been seen in just a handful of content. Judging by photos and videos, this one appears to be the Evike brand Matrix Level 1 plate carrier with integrated magazine pouches. It seems that the strapping, quick release buckles and D-rings were added onto it by way of a few staples based on this close-up to give it a more tactical look or possibly to give it a similar appearance to the commonly used voodoo vest. Now, finally, whenever the dock is at the arcade or in the arena, he usually walks around in nothing but black socks or just barefoot. Who wouldn't if you own the place? But when he's out and about, his go-to footwear looks to be just a pair of black US style jungle boots, or if it's a more formal affair, a pair of Air Jordan Future boots, bread. And that's more or less Dr. Disrespect's overall look. Again, we didn't cover every single style he's been seen sporting because it would take quite a while to do so, and there will likely be even more in the future, so we stuck to the more mainstream and popular ones. The Doc is a very energetic individual, and his streams have certainly helped pass the time whilst researching, writing, and editing a number of videos for this channel. Hopefully it was enjoyable, and maybe it helped inform a few viewers about the two-time, and those looking to recreate his style for the annual Doctober competitions. Remember to like and subscribe, or just check back soon for more videos right here on Uniform History. Also, Doc, if you end up watching this, feel free to add anything that was missed and have Alex give us a call. We'd love a chance to share a gin and tonic in the arena sometime. Yeah, 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 yeah.